Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and welcome to the OpenTunes News. As of the release of OpenTunes 1.2, I've received a number of complaints. As such, I have needed to have a rather lengthy disclaimer. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and narrate the entire disclaimer, otherwise, every single OpenTunes News video will have the first five minutes covering a five minute long disclaimer, which would be boring. But I do expect people to read this, and if they wind up leaving me messages, and such like that, expecting me to respond any way than the disclaimer states, then that's your fault if you didn't read it. I'm sorry. And for the first story of the day, you can see that it is currently Saturday, June 2nd, 2008. And I'm currently sitting at 1,004 subscribers. I just want to let you guys know that I have noticed this, and I do plan on having a formal video about this and I'd just like to quickly just mention this for at least for right now thank you so much for everybody that's decided to join me in my artistic journey in using both free and inexpensive but full featured tools whether they're free or not thank you so much for joining me now in high school I remember thinking oh yeah I could totally get a thousand fans of my work I could totally get that and you know it's one thing to just be a cocky kid in high school that just assumes everybody loves his work to actually experiencing the amount of hard work that's necessary in order to get a thousand subscribers and experiencing that work firsthand and seeing me actually get that that's awesome next big goal is 10,000 subscribers 10 times this number that right there is going to be pretty impressive if or when it happens that is the next big goal 10,000 is just my next big benchmark that I'd like to reach and I'm curious I'm curious can I reach that that would be amazing that'd be another little dream come true anyways let's go ahead and move on to the next story of the day so the second story of the day is by Manon John and the title of the story is Work in Progress Timeline Display Update and it states the following. The timeline, especially when zoomed all the way out, is very noisy with all the lines and symbols. This pull request attempts to clear some of that noise. Changes are being suggested from Canero and further discussed in the pull request. The updated timeline display looks like this. And as you can see, it does look pretty interesting. It does take away quite a bit of the noise and such like that. Now, personally, in my personal usage of open tunes, I like to see the exact frame number at all times. And so there's not really any need for me to zoom quite this far out, especially when I can only see every five frame numbers. So for me, I'm not ever going to zoom out quite this far, but that's fine. I don't need to. Some people might like being zoomed this far out. The following changes were made to the timeline display. The continuation line has been removed from all levels. The vertical frame separators have been removed between held frames. A vertical separator only exists whenever there is a frame change. A scenes marker interval will only show when there is a vertical separator between two different frames. The frame marker dot no longer takes on text color. It is always black. It still turns red if source file cannot be found. The keyframe icon switches to a white diamond, blue when selected, when zoomed in less than 50%. Horizontal lines were added in the frame header to show where the fixed and relative onion skin marks could be enabled. This is, that's actually something that I've been wanting for a long time. There are a lot of accidental clicks around those two things, the 
relative and fixed onion skin markers. Oftentimes I accidentally change frames, create the wrong type of onion skin and all that. It gets really frustrating. Vertical lines between frames in the frame header have been shortened to three to six pixels tall from the bottom. The small frame indicators below the numbers in the frame header have been removed. When activated, the space between the start and end frame header markers have a different color than the rest of the header to show the scene boundaries. Currently, the color used is the same color for non-empty columns. Note, change was made to the X sheet mode also. Also, fixed bug with the setting marker interval equaling zero, which caused crashes. Also, in this pull request, changes to the X sheet or timeline orientation button to have an icon instead of words. Tooltips added to items in the panel. Windows menu item timeline, which opens directly to the timeline. And this pull request also resolves pull request number 2003, a dedicated timeline room setup. This has been requested by multiple people and is also being added in anticipation of the new curve animation feature currently in development. The next story of the day is titled Glitch or Not by Behemoth. And Behemoth states the following. In a raster level, when the cursor is not over the canvas, switching between frames is not updated. Rodney Baker also confirms that this is present inside of the latest nightly build. Behemoth suggests that possibly this is due to improvements to the brush tool itself. Manon Jong by and large agrees with that statement as well. So ultimately, maybe this is some of the reason why it's sometimes difficult for you to see what's going on on the screen with regards to what's going on with your animation. You just simply need to have your cursor on the canvas itself in order to flip through the variously different frames. Sometimes it might not necessarily just be an issue with the rate in which the viewer updates. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes it might be a different glitch rather than just the update speed on the viewer. As for the next story of the day, I find this one rather interesting. Option for automatically generating palettes when raster images are loaded as color model. This is a post made by Shun Iwasawa. Color models are created for accurate color reference during production when painting characters and props. If the color model is a tuned raster or vector level, it already comes with a palette whose style names and page configuration will be preserved. If the color model is a full color image or animation level, the palette is automatically generated by extracting colors from the image. See also the user manual. In Japanese animation production work, most ink and paint work is done by using Rita's Paint Man, and color models are created by using Adobe Photoshop during the migration of the softwares. There would be a case that ink and paint work must be done with open tunes by using a raster color model, such as PNG made with Photoshop. Before this pull request, loading raster images as color model does automatically generate a palette, but the order of styles becomes too irregular so that Users must manually organize style order after loading, which was very troublesome. Commonly used color model in Japanese animation production. Color model images used in Japan animation productions are like this. And here's an image to demonstrate. This image is contained in OpenTune sample data. Note that they are generally absent of anti-aliasing and styles are put in rectangular chips surrounded by a solid line with a specific color. So here's a description of the pull request. Based on the above, this pull request will add a new option when loading a raster image to the color model. After specifying the file, the new dialog will open like this. A group box titled Picking Colors from Raster Image is newly added in this pull request. Pick Type specifies a method to 
generate your palette from the image. Note that the first two options, pick every color as different style and integrate similar colors as one style, are conventional, but moved from the preferences to here. The third option, pick colors and color chip grid, is newly added. Grid color line specifies a color used for border line of color chips. Grid line width specifies line width of the color chips border. Chip order specifies order of picking color chips into the palette. For loading the above example, the generated palette will be automatically organized like as follows. Now, personally, I think this is pretty cool. I still think that when it's all said and done, people are going to wind up organizing the colors any way that they want after the fact. But even still, I think that uh, having some sort of something to help you out in keeping all of your colors organized throughout the full course of an animation is very important. Yeah, I'm excited to see this uh, as a new entry into uh, Open Tunes. This looks pretty cool. Now for the next story, if you recall about six months ago or so, I uh, went into the help menu and you know you see about open tunes which basically just gives you a little pop-up that talks about when the distribution was released or you go to the help menu and you bring up the startup pop-up. This is a very unhelpful help menu and it's about time that we actually do something like add the OpenTunes user manual to the help menu. I Honestly, for some reason, I don't understand why this hasn't been done yet. To my understanding, this help menu, this user manual, is designed very similar to a wiki. And this user manual is just progressively getting more and more out of date with each new release of OpenTunes, each experimental build of OpenTunes, and etc. And with this functioning more and more like a wiki, the only way to make sure that people are going to keep this thing up to date is to make sure that people are actually using it. And the best way to make sure people are using it is to make sure that it's included in on the help menu. And evidently, I'm not the only one that thinks this. It's just I haven't been really vocal about this for a long time. Gab3D went ahead and made a post with the title, Link to Online Documentation and Help Menu? Question mark. And he states the following. Now that you're into adding menu options, how about adding a link to the OpenTunes online documentation to the help menu? It seems easy to do, and it certainly increased the exposure of the online documentation to users, especially new ones. And I completely agree with that. I, I, I guess I understand that something like this could just, you know, not really occur to people, or it people could easily forget. I understand that sort of thing, but I, other than that, I don't know why it hasn't been implemented. Artist Teacher also contributes a bit in this story that I think is kind of interesting. He says that um, also including a link to the forum for help inside of the help menu would be an additional online form of documentation and an assistance to new and familiar users of OpenTunes. Artist Teacher also includes a little bit more that's a little bit off topic. But in addition to these links, I think the menus in general could use some reorganization. The file menu in particular is excessively long. It would be great to have some sub-menus to make it easier to find certain commands. And it, personally, I totally agree with that. I think that uh, some of these menus are getting a little bit overbloated. I mean, you look on my screen, you see Open Script Console and Quit kind of split off on its own half pop-up window is what I guess I would call it. It just doesn't look very good. I mean, we got all of this stuff separated into different little separation markers, and I think some of these could actually be sub-menus, such as output settings to export soundtrack. I think that right there could be its own menu setting. But yeah, just generally as, a, as an idea, um, this story is pretty good in that I think that we need to get the online documentation included on the help menu and I do think that we need to reorganize especially the the file menu. 
As for the next story, we have a work in progress a schematic user interface update made by Manon Zhang. And you can go ahead and take a look at these uh, images to illustrate how the schematics are going to be graphically improved and such like that. And you can also read this list in the link in the video description below. As earlier stated, as I was describing the X sheet, it really isn't readable in an uh, understandable sort of way. And so I'm... I don't really see any reason to, to read all of this, but basically the most notable things that I can see out of these changes is that there's no longer a gradient on each one of the nodes, and tooltips have been fixed, and they added a closed sub X sheet to the context menu, which I think is kind of interesting right there. There's more, but of course, th these are the highlights that I think are worth mentioning. Now, what I wish we could address at some point, maybe there is this story out there, but I haven't yet been able to find it. I think something needs to be done with the graph. The graph itself is pretty frustrating. Uh, I, I don't think that it's designed to be very effective in customizing the curves the motion curves of your character's movements, whether it's the a, an actual character or whether it's the camera. Doing it on a motion path simplifies things a little bit, but poses different problems in and of itself. But then you don't animate to a motion path, and suddenly you're just animating this character, whether it's a camera or literally a character's hand or something like that, without any arcs. It's just straight lines, straight paths, and such like that. And generally, I think that something needs to be done in order to work with the graph motion curves to control the ease in, ease out information. Something needs to be done in order for you to either create an arced movement for your character with or without a motion path. Something needs to be done about that. But, you know... Having a graphic update to the schematic in one way or another, it's a welcome change. I just think that at some point, not just the schematic, but the graph needs an overhaul. Something needs to be done in order to make working with cutout animations easier instead of open tunes. Especially if you want to just create an arc without necessarily having to have a motion path every single time and without having to input separate values for the north and south and east and west information. That right there can get really confusing. You're changing all of these values and it winds up being guesswork and your animation can wind up doing a lot of really bizarre activity without you doing much. And you can potentially completely ruin your animation in no time flat because of that. So something, something needs to be done with that. Maybe not today, but later on in the future, those are my thoughts. Well, that pretty much concludes it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys didn't like it, please like, share, and subscribe. Anyways, there's a lot of work that goes into making these videos. And if you guys would like to take a look at any of my other videos, feel free to click on any of them that are appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.